welcome to Retro Roulette, uh, the Fresh Maker. I'm your host, Michael Riley. With me is Dane Forgeon. Mentos. Jason Amherst. Do, 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 uh. And Billy Carter. Oh no, I dropped it in my pop. No, oh, that's not good. Anyway, we're uh, hitting up the SNES games. As you can see, the wheel is in front Remember. of us. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can do any kind of fucked up shit you want. As long as at the end, you, you eat, hold up a Mentos. You eat a Mentos. And people go, oh, you. Uh, we used all of our vetoes on the last edition of Retro Roulette, so we are back to one for the whole show, for the whole session. Oh, no. Uh, just putting that out Luckily, there Luckily, there's start. at Although, least some good stuff in this one. Oh, oh we're starting this with a banger. Will, this one will this be good, be, yes. Is this magic request our Michael Rodant? <laughs> yep. <laughs> say, say his name and he'll appear. Mickey I Mouse. believe in Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody, now this, this I like. Angry. Yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. As the uh, yeah, they uh, they made three of them, but the third one never came stateside until the Game Boy Advance, unfortunately. Now, um, full disclosure: if it had landed on my choice space, I would have chosen this game. Well, now you're going to have to make a different choice just in case, because sure, yeah, because we can still land on Dane's choice, even even if the one you would choose. The thing about the, the, the cast choice spaces, I, I need to reiterate, is that even if if we've if we vetoed a game and you wanted to see it, uh, you can pick it. <laughs> <laughs> vetoed games are eligible for choice spaces, but games we've already played, uh, obviously. So we need to recheck those uh, couple of uh, translated ROMs, uh, the ones that I sent you. See if they work. Uh, cause I had I had working versions that I had sent a while back. Don't worry, Mickey. I'll find Pluto for you. Worried? Who's worried? Ha! Huh? If Goofy said he'll find him, then Goofy We're will screwed. definitely. He'll probably. Uh, Pluto, oh, he's gonna... here, Pluto. Where are you, pal? <laughs> He's gonna have sex with the dog, I know it. Oh god! Boing. And Mickey Mouse was never seen again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, is this the overworld map? No, with the good truth, I'm gonna always miss the good truth. I want to go to the good truth. I'm gonna go to the good truth. Now I. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Pluto got kidnapped, or dognapped, rather. Something like that. <sighs> He's walking around awfully cheery that his, about his dog getting kidnapped. I'd be all ticked off, like... I mean... Yeah. If somebody... Oh... <laughs> Hi, I'm looking for my dog, Pluto. Have you seen him? Yes, the dog was captured by the evil ruler. This <laughs> world. Why is he Christopher Walken? <laughs> Just go with it. Emperor Pete! How? You yeah, will never you give him back to you, Baz. Emperor Pete! Em Emperor Pete. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Emperor. Great Pete. spell check in Nintendo. It's Capcom's fault. He will put an evil spell on Pluto as he does. What's business? <laughs> I warn you, his powerful magic has never been defeated. Why am I constantly waving at you? <laughs> Do not attempt to rescue your dog. Sit. Wow. Thanks, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> No! Pluto's my pal! I won't give up! Can you tell me where I can find this Emperor Pete? Look, fuckface, if you insist on going, <laughs> file the Emperor's statues. One after another. These will lead you 
was Castle. And his asshole. <laughs> Gosh, thanks. So long. Guess I'm going to Pete's to Pete's asshole. That's right. It's a sequel to Pete's Dragon. I will, I will scatter magical boxes around the what? We don't even know who the fuck you are. First of all, <laughs> they will help you whenever you find trouble along your journey. Good luck and beware the ebb was magic. You know this this trilogy of games is something that Capcom and Disney could easily put out and people would buy in a hard I, I, I thought they oh, released at least one of these uh, games later on. Uh, on Game Boy Advance, they actually released all three of them, but not anytime recently, unfortunately. Oh, hmm. they'll put out all right. <laughs> Excuse you? <laughs> we, well, we, we all know Daisy's got a tight little ass. Well, it, when, if there's any Pete lines, if we ever get to any Pete lines, I'll do Pete. Don't. Where did I tell you, goof? Go ahead, I tell you. Where did I tell you there, goof? Don't be putting your pee pee in the dog's butt. All right? Well, I tell you, I tell you there, goof. Uh, hold on, wait, hold on a second. Hold on. See? What the yuck would make you think that I would do that to a dog, you yuck an idiot? Well, you are a dog. No, he's not. He's a cow. No, that was disproven. Somebody made that up on the internet. He is actually a dog. I okay, mean, so think about it. His, it, his original name so was that's still Dippy weird dog. then, because you know Goofy is a dog and Pluto's a dog. That means Pluto is a <laughs> Pluto is a uh, like Pluto is a sub and Goofy's a dom. Let's just say that. Well, no. Yeah. Well, look, look at it this way. Okay, Pluto is a special needs he's... dog. Is what it is. Oh, yep. Lord. Uh huh. Yeah, because he can only okay, bark, so... whereas Goofy can talk. Okay, but if you really want to get weird... And, horse, and I do, it's this show. Cow. Yeah, Horse Horsebell and Clarabelle Cow are the only two Disney characters to alternate between animal form and humanoid form. That is true. Or we could just look at it as Disney didn't plan much, so they just kind of just went with it. Yeah. Walt Disney's sitting there chopping on a cigar. Wow, who gives a shit? No one's going to watch these new frangles. <laughs> Walt, yeah, yeah, Di Walt Disney was just sitting there going like, yeah, continuity doesn't matter. I hate the Jews. And, you know, just, you know, normal Walt Disney. What the heck is and, the, and, and, and that was a misnomer, too. It was actually when that rumor came about. No, oh, I love Jewish started people. By, They're real gas. It was actually... <laughs> right, it was actually started by the Teamsters because some oh, of the animators wanted to unionize. And... Yeah, that, I actually was going to point that out. That uh, <laughs> The Teamsters yeah. had like a smear campaign against him. So they said, oh, he hates Jews, and it was like a complete and utter lie. Walt Disney loved the Jews. He hired a lot of them. Yeah, well. It was like... It was like 40% or something like 35% of his. Uh, now there's an. I love the Jews. Now there's goddamn Hispanics on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> he actually had a lot, of, a lot of people. They were like, well, Walt Disney's a racist. And the, one of the black animators is like, yeah, if he was, he wouldn't have hired me. <laughs> yeah. And this Isn't is back right? in the time that. Isn't that right, Eric the animator? Wait, are we saying yeah. that Walt Disney was a decent human being? Yes, we are saying that Walt Disney that? was a decent human being. Next, you'll As be it turns me out, that... this this head of this uh, family company that's been around for eons is actually quite the family man. It's true, <laughs> and he was wife. He had two daughters. One he adopted. Well, there was there was a book that was written about Walt Disney. I think it was called Prince of Darkness, where a lot of it was just um, people that didn't like him for one reason or another. And it was like, oh, he was a terrible person. But, oh. It was all because he couldn't afford, it's a giant even though they were, they were, 
they were a big company at the time, but the Teamsters wanted so much union dues. It was ridiculous. You know, I'm looking at this giant Pete snake. All I'm, I'm getting oh vibes oh, of... Oh, for Pete snake. Okay. Which, whichever Nightmare on Elm Street where there was the fucking Freddy snake, remember that? Three... Three, four, whichever one it was. I'm getting honestly, those honestly, honestly you or... could have said like seventy six, and I would have, I would have believed you. Nightmare on Elm Street eighty seven. So very tired. No, not so very tired. That's how he gets you. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you gotta use your brain. You gotta use your big boy brain. <laughs> you gotta use the big boy brain. <laughs> yep, yep. You notice what? So Alana... very tired could be the could be the subtitle of literally all the Nightmare on Elm Streets. <laughs> you ever notice he just kind of affects only a few people at a time in those movies? It's never well. Like, yeah, you can't molest it, everybody at once. I, I know. So it's like he he like goes after just a few people, but well, by the way, I still fine. find it hilarious I mean, that like he is a no. He is he is a child molester. That was his character, and yet everybody like dresses as him <clears> on Halloween. Well, That's, makes no sense to me. Yeah. That's all right. In, in the first few movies, they called him a child killer. It wasn't the until the later ones where they fully said, "Yeah, he was a child molester." And apparently, I mean, I don't. You can take this with a grain of salt because I'm not exactly what you would call a. Elm Street connoisseur, but I believe the reason why he only targeted kids from Elm Street and Springfield or whatever is because he was getting revenge on the parents who burned him alive. So he was just like, you know. Well, hence, the, uh, hence the episode of The Simpsons with uh, you all been uh, doing better now, like will. The Emperor's Magic, I see. Oh, hi, a wizard. What are you doing here? Look at my finger. Smell my <laughs> finger. I have come to give you this magic turban. <laughs> Gee, oh, thanks. Thank you very much. What's it doing? You jackass. With this turban, you will have the power to perform magic and to remain underwater for a very long while. Use it wisely and be careful. Don't start going. <laughs> yeah. Don't fly into buildings. Don't be anti-Semitic. It's not, um, it's not so much a turban. That's a that's a full blown costume. That's yeah, a full outfit. It's uh, Sim Sim Salabim. Something like that. That is a full Aladdin. Here we go. Get out a magic carpet. He's Aladdin. And look, there's a magic lamp. Oh, I think. I think that actually powers your uh, meter. Oh my god, it's the Prime Minister of Canada. Oh, that's shit water. Justin Trudeau. Poo water! Have you ever seen Have you ever seen that picture of him? No, I can't say I that. would call this in Scotland, crud the liquid. Oh, I think you can actually change back into regular Mickey, I believe. Probably. Yeah, I think it's L and R. Hmm. No, okay, so whatever I, those are, whatever those are, kill them, please. Thank you. That was really uh, fucking unsettling. Uh, unsettling. Mm. Unsettling is it the word? That's that was freaking disgusting. Unsettling is it the goddamn word for it? This is bullshit. <laughs> oh fuck! Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> You're out of your element, Donnie. I was just about to say that. You never fuck a stranger in the ass. This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. Mark it down. Mark it down. Oh, psycho John Goodman. How we love you. What? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know what happened here and why I'm all the way back there now and I can't do anything. Uh oh did, no! Did the game solve one? Probably, I think. 
Oh, well, that, oh no! That's weird. Just, that's yeah, disappointing. Well, that's all right. We've actually made it. We made it to the end of the segment, so I'm not that worried about it. Thoughts on the magical quest starring Mickey Mouse, Dane? Um, it's Disney paired up with Capcom, and more often than not, they're very good games. And this is no exception. This was a very great platformer. Yes, uh, it was very enjoyable. Jason. Yeah, this is a classic. Uh, this this whole trilogy is freaking phenomenal. Uh, I look forward to seeing you play the other two. Billy. I like Mickey Mouse. Okay, well. Okay, cool. And this game, so. Yeah, it's a really fun platforming game. Uh, one of the classic SNES platformers. I think, I think everybody, I don't know, I, I don't. I can't think of anybody who dislikes this game. I'll be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's, yeah one of, it's one of Capcom's best games on the SNES. This and Street Fighter 2 are probably up there as a top. So, you know. It's a, it's a great game. Scores out of 10, Dane. Dane. Bill, uh, Jason. 10. Yeah, Billy. Dane. Yeah, 10. Absolutely 10. Yeah, I watched Tiffany play this on a on a stream, and she was raging. <laughs> Is how's, fucking... t- how's Tiff doing lately? Uh, she seems to be doing fine. All right, spinning again. This fucking mouse on my bird. <laughs> like, how, how, how can how can she fucking play games like Dark Souls and be fine with it, and then fucking like? rage while playing this game like you know is beyond me SNES hard I guess speaking of Iram Gun Force <laughs> that that propeller noise oh it's Contra with a time limit oh it's a running gun Basically, a running gun, an arcade game. Huh. All right. Oh my God, that death noise. That shriek. This looks like it was a budget title. Probably. Uh, Plays pretty good. Jesus. Plays pretty good. I'm not saying all budget titles were bad. Ooh, that slowdown. Uh, yeah, Yeah. this did a lot of. Sprites on the screen. I don't know if this had a different name of, uh, in the in the United States. This is this is a Japanese version. Oh. The Japanese cart, as it were. This this really doesn't look that bad. That's really not. Okay. I'm in a turret. Uh, released in arcades in 1991. Uh, known as Gun Force Battlefire Engulfed Terror Island. Uh, okay. Ported by Bits Studio. Uh, sequel, Gun Force 2 was known in Japan as Geostorm. Uh, this did come out in America in uh, November of 1992, apparently. Hmm. Yeah, shoot down the helicopter. Oh, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that Neo Geo game that it was just people Metal running slug. and running? Hmm. Metal Slug. Yeah, that's, I'm getting distinct Metal Slug vibes from this. I yeah, yeah you're not Metal wrong. Slug is, is fun. I love Metal Slug. Who, who developed Metal Slug? Yeah, was... SNK. SNK. Was it SNK? Okay. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was trying to remember. Like I said, this is IRM. Known yep. for some pretty fucking hard uh, games, honestly. All all things considered. Oh yeah, they are the and uh, some stinker. They are the uh, are I believe they are the uh, studio behind uh, the game Holy Diver, which did not come yeah, out in America. Are. I own it. Yeah, it here, uh... Oh, I have it on a compilation card. But... You may find motorcycles to speed across enemy territory faster, in addition to helicopters and cable cars. So it's basically like uh, Contra with vehicles, which is an interesting yeah. concept. Yeah. The plot is, the plot according to Wikipedia is 
Parachuted out of a bomber, the player has landed into hostile territory to defeat the enemy who is threatening Mother Earth. This scored a 3.075 out of 5 in Nintendo Power. Interesting. Not bad. Yeah, it really isn't. Uh, hmm. An overall aggregate score of 60.25% on game rankings. Uh, it only got an 18 out of 40 in Famitsu in Japan. Uh, Sinclair user over in uh, Europe uh, gave the arcade machine a 79%. Hmm. Uh, Zero Magazine uh, gave the arcade machine two stars. Hmm. Um, in Japan, Game Machine listed Gun Force as the 10th most successful table arcade unit of the month. Uh, September 1991 issue of Japanese publication Micom Basic Magazine, the game was ranked on the number 15 spot in popularity. 15 out of 100? Uh, uh, let's see. Gun Force number 2. Uh, Mission did manage to make it to arcades in America and did get released stateside uh, on the game Irem Arcade Hits, apparently, in 2011. Interesting. Uh, on PC. Uh, released by Dot Emu. It's considered the spiritual predecessor to the Metal Slug franchise. Ah, oh, well, there's why you're getting Metal Slug. So Gun Force 2 times. actually came out before Metal Slug. Because Gun Force 2 came out in 1994, and <coughs> Metal Slug, the first game, came out in 1996. So that would explain the similarities. The fine folks at SNK saw this and went, ha, we can do better. I shall kill for it. Hmm. Skull, ammo, and ass. Ah, shame, you could have gotten some bass. Baz Luhrmann? I'm sure. Which I'm assuming meant bazooka. Now. <laughs> I freaking scream so. Uh, yeah, that's my favorite thing. That definitely was recorded from something. <laughs> what it came from, I don't know, though. But it's kind of like how the, uh, the sound effects in, like, Golden Max came from, like, Conan the Barbarian. Ah! I like it in the first way. It's it's pretty funny. The sword sound in Golden Axe. Brickle, 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 brickle. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> whenever, yeah. whenever, whenever, whenever I, you know, I'm playing the game and I'm, you know, I'm hitting the guy with the sword. I always go, brickle, brickle. Brickle, 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 brickle. As long as you don't, as long as you don't go brickleberry, we don't want that. <laughs> oh, you know that's just terrible. Uh, the the FM synth on the uh, Genesis always did kind of sound a little farty to a degree, though, too. So like, it's just like par 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 par. Why is the Genesis a Kenny, Kenny G in a lonely sewer pipe? <laughs> I, I'm still finding it hard to believe that Golden Axe is going to become a freaking animated comedy show on Comedy Central. Golden Axe? Yeah. Yep. Based based on the video game. Yeah. Yep. Oh dear lord, I'm gonna be watching that. Why do I have I'm a suspicion? Watching. Why do I have I'm a suspicion? Like... 
what, what's your suspicion? That um, they're gonna make it like Dave the Barbarian, like I am a barbarian, I am dumb. Yeah, like I really, I don't know how to feel about it. You know, the game wasn't exactly funny at all. It was pretty serious. I mean, it, it was your standard, you know, fantasy barbarian beat em up. Yeah, you no. Know, uh, but, but there is the no show humor is in it. from co creators Mike McMahon and Joe Chandler. Hmm. Matthew what are they Reese. For? Uh, Mike McMahon. Um. Let me see. Um. This, this this might determine whether I Solar Opposites not. and Star Trek Lower Decks. Uh, I hope the animation doesn't look like Cal Art. Or or Rick and Morty for that matter. Art. Yeah, it, but here's the thing: Art isn't Star Trek Lower Decks actually good. Uh, yeah, I don't actually, like the, anime. It is. the right the writing's fine, but I don't like the animation. It's just too cartoony. I mean, for something like Golden Axe, you know what I mean? They they can't be spaghetti arm thin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Matthew it, it, Matthew Reese uh, from the Americans and Perry Mason, Danny Pudi from Community and Mythic Quest. Lisa Gilroy from Jury Duty in Interior Chinatown, Liam McIntyre and The Flash, Carl Tart from Grand Crew and Star Trek Lower <laughs> Decks will lead the voice cast. Comedy Central ordered 10 episodes. The description is that Axe Battler, played by McIntyre, Tyrus Flair, played by Gilroy, and Gilius Thunderhead, played by Reese. Uh, will once again battle to save Yuria from the evil giant Death Adder, who just won't seem to stay dead. Fortunately, this time they have the inexperienced and underprepared Hampton Squib, played by Pootie, on their side. Okay. I think you might have went a little too far. Nope, oh, never mind. I made it. I'm a genius. Genius. I'm, <laughs> I'm smart. G I'm a gymnasius. I'm gelatinous. Ow. Jesus Christ. I like how I have a super floaty jump until I get shot and then I sink like a fucking stone. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Abed from uh, Community playing one of the main characters. Okay. So long as it's not Chevy Chase. Speaking of old men who yell at clouds, uh, Seinfeld. You know, he has the fucking nerve to... The, the fucking cancel culture shows like Seinfeld couldn't be on the air today. I so can't, like, I'm, I'm mad Florida. that I can't say the N-word. Hey. Like Michael Richards, my hey. good friends. Um... What's the animation going to look like for Golden Axe? Don't know. They haven't revealed anything from it yet. Oh, All they did was okay. announce it. Now, now, if it looks like Vox Machina, I, I'll be happy. You know what I mean? That would be like cool. The animation from that. Yeah, I did like the animation from that show. I, I actually do like that show. It's... But if they make it look like Lower Decks, that's just going to be a buzzkill for me. What do you expect, you know, though? It's friggin' Paramount and adult animated comedy. 
If it's an adult animated comedy, it's going to look like some sort of cheap ass adult animated comedy. <sighs> I mean, it could be goofy. I mean, I, I don't, oh, I don't care about that. We already played but the Mickey Mouse game. It, but but Vox Machina is a you know a goofy show, but it has its serious moments. But the animation is just top notch. Yeah, but I mean that's also like because one, it's based on D and D, and two, it's on Amazon, so it's got like fuck you, Jeff Bezos money. That's true. It's Jeffrey Bezos. Heeman Darbin, Heeman Darbin, Heeman Darbin, Dar. I mean, hell, just look at the Fallout TV show, which is doing wonders for the Fallout game series. Oh, dear lord, I just watched all of that. Oh, it's so good. Also, I didn't oh, realize that the lyrics to Jeffrey Bezos were written by uh, Doodle Bob. <laughs> what, Bo Burnham? Just because you were you were starting to go trail off into me hoi me noi. Oh, he my name, hoi me noi, he my name, hoi me noi. See you on the hoi, hoi me noi. Actually, I actually have an I have an enamel pin of uh, Doodle Bob. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you have an enamel pin of Bo Burnham. I was gonna be like, that's very oddly specific. It's weird that we're talking about Spongebob considering that the day that we're recording this is the day before the uh, Spongebob's 25th anniversary. Oh my <laughs> god, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, 1999. May 1st, 1999 was the day that uh, that <laughs> show premiered. And it hasn't and left the airwaves since. Nope. And we've loved it ever since. <laughs> hey, I mean, Ooh, to be fair... Giraffe. To be fair... At least it's not problematic, unlike, you know, the creator of a certain other show that Nickelodeon ran into the ground. Hey, SpongeBob, let's make fun of the... No. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm, no. I'm referring to a guy who, uh, you know, who... who, who Hid the fact that his real name is Elmer, <laughs> uh, you know, and and cast himself as the handsome Doctor Rip Studwell in his own show. Uh, Are you talking fairly about the Fairly Odd Parents? Oh, oh Butch, Butch, uh, yep. yep. Butch Hartman. I follow yep. him on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, the fact that, like, it's come out that a lot of the artwork that he's drawn for people recently wasn't actually drawn by him, uh, or the fact that, like, because the fact that, like, he had other artists working for him at Nickelodeon who were doing the character designs for the shows and stuff like that, he was just the executive producer on them, so they were drawing in his style a la, uh, you know... Akira Toriyama running Bird Studio. Well, yeah, couldn't. Well, you can't draw Allah, you'll get killed. <laughs> no, and then of course uh, the the fact that uh, all these other things have come out. Like he he ran the uh, the Kickstarter to start a streaming platform that was supposed to be nothing but Christian content, and he's he's basically fleeced a bunch of people to like make really bad Christian cartoons. Well, he's got one out right now, and it's actually doing pretty darn well. Oh, he's 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 also an autism denier. Well, you know, people's opinions doesn't necessarily mean they're right. Yeah, like, the, yeah. the, the man is just very, very... Uh, I'm pretty sure you could say anything... You could say anything you want about Butch Hartman. I don't think Billy's going to change his mind about about liking it. No. No. I yeah, like I Butch mean, Hartman. Uh, sorry. But, but, <laughs> uh, Butch Hartman kills kittens. Uh, nope, sorry. 
<laughs> no, no, those kittens were those kittens were Nazis, and they deserved it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, those like uh, the, the men were Nazis. The man was the man was creative, oh, you know, Lord. and and I I applaud him for the stuff that he did back in the day with Dexter's Lab and Johnny Bravo and the early seasons of Fairly Odd Parents. But my Danny, God, did Danny he, Phantom? Yeah, you know, he tried to have his cake and fuck it, too, when he did Danny Phantom, and he tried to be like, oh, no, those aren't the ghosts of people. They're monsters. I'm like... I fuck kids. Really, dude? Like, <laughs> <laughs> thoughts, on well, gun, thoughts on Gun Force, Dane? It was pretty good, actually. I've never seen this before. And like I said, I was getting a lot of metal slug vibes and apparently this was a spiritual ancestor of it and honestly i was enjoying this a lot jason you know what i did not know this 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 ever existed this spiritual predecessor to the metal slug franchise this is like a hidden gem you know, like, what is this not doing on, like, the Switch Online service or some shit like that? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Billy. Well, you know, since it is iRim, Nintendo will probably put it on there. But, yeah, um, I'm going to try to find this cartridge if it's, well, if it's <clears throat> moderately priced. I'm going to try to find it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it. Yeah. Now i got to check price charting. Yeah, that was actually really, it was really, the sm controls are really smooth. The amount of control you have while you're moving around in the air is really nice. Uh, you don't feel like you're really in danger of sliding off a platform. Uh, the shooting controls is very nice. Um, it It is a lot like Metal Slug and a lot like Contra in a lot of ways, but it's very good at what it does. Uh, incorporation of vehicles isn't months. like isn't clumsily added or anything like that. It, it's a nice thing. And it, feels, it doesn't feel like you're going to break anything it's great it's a good game scores out of 10 dane nine jason a little rough around the edges uh i give it an eight billy i'll give it a nine i'm gonna give it a nine as well it's really very good all We're right. If it wasn't for the slowdown, that's the one thing that bugged me. Yeah, I'm willing that... to bet that there's a. I'm willing to bet there's a patch that fixes that, though. Possibly. Oh, oh, I'm sure there is. Um, uh, you know, if they put it on the switch, that'll take care of it. That'll increase the process. Oh, that um, too. Yeah, but I mean, the fact that uh, there are patches out there that fix like the slowdown for games like Contra and uh, uh, Gradius and stuff like that on the SNES. Oh, yeah. Wow, we're going through some good companies here. Yes, this uh, Gun Force sells for about 25 bucks. Prince of Persia! Oh, they published this for uh, Super yeah, I, I actually, I actually, Yeah, but I have this game right here. Yeah, this, this one's a toughie because it's a cinematic platformer. You, you know, and it was actually Bubba who gave me this for my birthday. This game. Bubba Ray Dudley, really? No, no, a friend of mine. No, Devon, get the Persia. It was Dances with Dudley. Yeah, it was Dances with Dudley, yeah. <laughs> if you watch a lot of my old uh, videos that I did when I did my toy show, uh, he did a lot of he was in a few episodes. Ah. He's a big old Georgia boy. <laughs> Dane always quotes him in all my videos. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Billy's Baba. Well, my favorite. Um, Bubba, what have I told you about traveling through the bushes like that? Not her. He was actually he was actually on an episode of You Can't Be Serious, and he was very funny. If you remember, who are we talking about? Um, I think his actual name is Derek. Oh, Bubba, yeah, 
Derek Ponder. He. I remember that. Ah, oh, there's the switch. Oh, damn. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this was the uh, same developer as uh, Karataka. Put on your Karataka. Put on your Karataka. Here comes Monica. Whoops. She gave a blowy to a president. <laughs> Why does that sound like uh, something that Adam Sandler would have actually sang? Yeah. Gave a blowy to a president. God damn it. Jump across Sounds like deck. something he would have sang in an uh, Opera Man segment. It's true. Baba da baba da baba duke. Can't do that apparently. Uh, looks like you can go down. I would not trust that. It is this game. I was gonna say, aren't there a lot of traps and yeah, trip? Yeah, but there's there's nothing to the left, so you look like you're about to take a shit off of the bathroom. I'm trying to go down, but I guess I can't. Like hang. Like, hang down? No? I actually thought that was something you can do in this game. I also thought... Oh, my what? God! Oh. Okay, well... Uh, you, you, I might be dead. You are dead. Dead, dead. dead. Okay. Keep in mind, Gosh, I did decide happened? to actually start with the training instead of going right. Whatever there. happened to the good old days when you can play Prince of Persia and you can run on the side sideways walls? <laughs> Running on the sideways you know, walls. I really want to play the uh, the new one, the Metroidvania one that Go, came out. Going up stairs. I heard it was really good. Stairs and going up sideways stairs. I just liked the uh, the Sands of Time one where you could you could reverse time to not I. They're apparently uh, working on a remake of it. Ah, oh, sweet. Training. What did that do? There we go. Not a clue. I guess he had to not fall as... Did you... Oh, oh okay. Yeah, you couldn't not... fall from the top of the screen down into the next screen. Yeah. There we go. Da -da -da. Whoops. Yeah, whatever. One and a Jack and Bandit. Yeah. Damn it. We both it's have what the, the same... music's doing. No, I know. But we both have the same thought. <laughs> There's a bomb in the lasagna? The helium is leaking out of my balloon? Now that's funny. For some reason, I th I thought this game was a lot more frustrating than it is. Maybe the PC version is way more frustrating. I was gonna say I think it depends upon what version of this game you play. Yeah. This really isn't that bad. 
Konami, no. I think, like really fine tuned the controls for uh, oh, the uh, SNES game. We. I feel like I was supposed to be able to like grab or hang, but I don't. I can't remember exactly. Let's try it again, I guess. Ah, piss. Maybe you're gonna get like a running jump? That's very possible. Yep, that was it. Ah, shit. No. Dick first onto the spikes. <laughs> Whoops. Now, now it's not a time to try to do the climby downy thingy. The problem is, is I don't know how to do it. Whoops. Whee! <laughs> Whoopsie, whoops, whoops, whoops. <laughs> Missed a button input. That'll happen. Missed it by that much. God damn it. Jump when I tell you to jump. It's those weird cinematic platforming controls. I would say, like on any other show, on any other episode, like this probably would have been the game of the evening, but. Yeah. Unfortunately, on this occasion, it is not. Oop. Yeah, I don't know how to climb down. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna die every time. Unfortunately, you you gonna die. With that attitude, yeah. Motherfucker. Oh, don't you, you call me that? Hey. You got a spike in the gooch. Yep. Motherfucker. God damn it, I hit jump. Apparently you did not. <sighs> to you. Like, I thought this game was going to be frustrating. Yeah, yeah like, it's starting oh, to get frustrating. Yeah. Ah! Huh. Interesting. Kenta What's Kobashi it? responded to a Sports Illustrated quote where Gunther mentioned Kobashi and Stan Hansen influenced his style. Gunther said, I loved watching Stan Hansen and Kenta Kobashi. They became my idols. When I began to watch matches, they helped develop a certain style. Uh, Kobashi responded, when I wrestled in Germany on the European expedition in 2008, there was a young man who chopped back when I hit chops and became a big chop battle. His name was Big Bang Walter. He now wrestles in WWE as Gunther. According to the article, Stan Hansen and Kenta Kobashi were the idols who influenced him. I'm happy. That's yeah. wholesome. Yeah, uh, it is. It. Wholesome wrestling. Do, 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 do. I'm, I'm looking up controls. <laughs> You're looking up doo doo? No. No, I just have to go on X to find that. <laughs> He's looking up doo doo, everybody. You dirty bitch. Uh, what a word to say, Nepal. 
<laughs> Arrest our duty. Doesn't appear that there's a way to just like climb down. Yeah, I just have to get lucky and let, like try to grab a ledge on my way down. I don't know. F uh. Nope. Get up there, you bastard. We. And uh, we. You have going wacko, telling it like it is. Well. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> Picture of somebody driving behind a uh, Tesla Cybertruck. The caption is, driving a whole air fryer is insane. <laughs> I saw one of those the other day. Oh, my God. Uh, Driving something that could be fucking bricked if you go to a car wash. I know, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're basically driving an Xbox 360. It's, it's true. It's true. It's true. Oh no, my cyber truck red ringed. <laughs> I spent $100,000 on a fucking paperweight. It, it, it looks like if... Uh... I mean, it'll hold it down your like... paper for sure. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a, a, a five-year-old is trying to draw a DeLorean. That's what it looks like. It's a low poly. It's a low poly Dodge Durango. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, lo I love it. Yeah, I fucking love it. So, uh, you hear the news about the Rock recently? Uh, with uh, he's the movie really just a pebble. God damn, fucking jump. What was the, the movie? Uh, the movie is reportedly uh, massively over budget because he's constantly late to set. Well, it's either it's either do WWE or movies. What do you? Well, do? apparently he's late to set, and this is no word of a lie. Uh, and this is from a friend of mine who worked background on the set of Ballers. Um. Rock is late to set because he's constantly working out before he goes to film. Oh, jeez. That does happen. not surprise me one bit. It's like... It, and it, because he's late to set, uh, and it has caused him on this l most recent movie to be seven to eight hours late to work and has uh, caused the movie to be reportedly $50 million over budget. Oh, and apparently, people who have worked with him have said that he pees in water bottles to save time, upsetting crew members on these sets. Damn it, Dwayne. If he's away from the trailer and needs to pee, he doesn't go to a public bathroom. He just pisses in a Voss water bottle and then hands it off to his team or PA to dispose of it. Wow, That's, what a weirdo. Yeah. What? You, you, it should be an honor to handle The Rock's piss. Fuck. Does the That's Rock's a little weird. Is, does The Rock's piss look a little brown to you? How the fuck are you supposed to do this? I don't know. Uh, I think I'm over this. Thoughts on Prince of Persia, Dane? Well, um, it was going good till this. Yeah. Unfortunately. And I think Mike kind of jinxed himself by saying, oh, this isn't so bad. It's not so frustrating. And then two minutes later, several spikes up the gooch. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. 
Jason? Yeah, this game is notoriously hard because you can't play it like you would a normal platformer. Like the the timing of the jumps and everything is not like super crispy and tight. Like there's a wind up to everything you do in this game. And like you have to approach like cliffs a certain way to like climb down ledges properly and you know, if I wanted to fucking be this freaking anal about shit, I would just have anal sex. Like, fuck. Um, Jeez. Well, I guess that is what you do when you have anal sex. Oh, this reminds me of Prince of Persia. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 sands of time. Oh, oh. <laughs> Billy. Oh. I, this game is always notoriously hard. It's not one. Of, it's not really one of my go-to games. Let's just say I I could live without it. Can you hear me? Oof. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, sorry, I was just rearranging some things. Thought I had more time, but Billy only says like one sentence about everything. Anyway, uh, it's it's. Yeah, notoriously difficult platformer. And as Jason said, it's not a typical platformer. Scores out of 10, Dane. Six. Jason. Four. Billy. Five. I was giving it a four. On this episode, we played Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, Gun Force, and Prince of Persia. Best game of the episode, Dane. Mickey Mouse. Jason. Michael Mouse. Billy. Mikael Muskin. Yeah, uh, Magical Quest is the winner. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Retro Roulette. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. For Dane Ford, Joan, Jason Amherst, and Billy Carter, see you on the next Retro Roulette. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.